Okay, so we're away finally. So a few technical issues here just getting set up. So we are here at South Pole Specialty Surgery for Animals and we are going to do a cholecystectomy in a dog. Um, this is a um, eight-year-old patient and has had an ultrasound by our medicine team um, for a um, inappetence, just general lethargy, and they have found that there's a all bloody mucus still. So I've got a few people logged on there. Can I just get whoever's logged on to just let me know that you can hear me okay? So we've got a bit of a delay. All good. That's great. So again, I'm James Simcock and we're at South Falls and we're going to do a cholecystectomy in this dog. So just before we get started, just remind you guys, if you um, like the live streams that we do, please um, subscribe to our channel and um, we will let you know of uh, cases that we're cutting um, as we go through. Get alerts if you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications. Also, if you want to know more about our continuing education, what's going on with South Falls and also Vet Dojo, um, please go to our South Falls Facebook group um, and join the closed group if you're in the veterinary industry and we can get in touch with you that way as well. So just hit Facebook and um, join the closed group. So we're going to do a midline approach. We've got the dog draped in. We've got the Xiford here and the pubis down this way. So I'm just using a number 10 scalpel blade to get started here. Just making an incision on midline. Cautery's in Jeff's hand there. So I've got my loops on, <coughs> which is uh, my magnification. Can I get the cautery plugged in? Oh, no, it's plugged in. Just the button is now working. So um, with these live streams, if you guys have any questions, please feel, to, um, feel free to add them in the comment section and we'll try and get to those as we go through. Um, like all these surgeries, if something does start to go a bit pear-shaped or we're not terribly happy with how things are progressing in the surgery, then we might just abort and focus on managing the patient. Um, so just be aware of that happening. So just coming through is a few x for the live stream lately. Um, and we can see where she was desexed. We can see the linear is looking a bit um, irregular there. So I'm going to come in just behind the umbilicus. And I just make a very small hole through the linear with my quartery. And I extend my linear incision. Just drop through like that and I'll extend my incision with a pair of scissors and just elevate and then just do a push cut along here. Okay. So quite an overweight dog. We've got a big falciform ligament and falciform fat. Here, so we're just going to use our electro surgery to remove that. I think most of the x laps I've done, I've had Jeff, one of our residents, scrubbed in. We've got Jeff here again today. So I'm not sure if you guys have any questions at the moment. A few people making some comments. Tara, are you able to just read through the comments that are there? So the make of my loops and the intensity of the headlight, the headlight intensity varies. Um, the loops are hiney um, and they're really nice loops. Um, they're a two and a half times magnification and a 40 centimetre focal distance. Um, so the 40 centimetre focal distance let me stand, lets me stand up a bit straighter when I'm doing surgery. I don't have to stoop so much. I've got pretty bad posture as it is, so anything I can do to help me stand up straight is a good thing. And the intensity of the light can vary <clears throat> Um, depending on the setting that it's on. Another question about what the indication for cholecystectomy in these dogs is. Um, so this dog's got a biliary mucosil, we believe, um, based on ultrasound. I was told it has a very classic appearance of a mucosil. Um, so that's why we're going in here. So we've taken out our falciform. We're just going to get our gilpies. Oh, sorry. Our Balfour's in here, just getting himself attached to the Balfour's. So you note know that I don't put any um, swabs 
in against the abdominal wall here. I don't think that's necessary to do that. Let's get all the momentum out of the arms there. Yeah, we'll use a spoon for sure. So these Balfours, we've got kind of this size and we've got another set that are like really, really small. So these are probably a little bit big for this patient, but we will get by. Okay, so Jeff's going to just pull up on that for me. So you can see our gallbladder in here. It's um, So can you guys see that in there? I'll try to position the camera for this case so we can see the gallbladder readily. Um, so the gallbladder is just up here. It's still not the best visualization with the lighting that we've got. We're trying to get a bit better lighting. There, Jeff, how does that go for visualization at the moment? Uh, if we pull that up, that's pretty good there. That's kind of where we'll be. Okay, so that gallbladder, we can see it's kind of got this um, opaque appearance. It's very, very firm to palpate. Um, and so it does look fairly typical of a cholecystectomy, I mean, of a, a mucus. I just removed the falciform fat to make it easier for closure and visibility once you're inside the abdomen here. So just following the duodenum around. Pass the duodenal flexure. Couple of mental adhesions to the space site, which we'll just take down. Just taking down a couple of adhesions in here from the when the animal was desexed as a puppy. So, got the colon there. So, duodenum, I'm just trying to follow this around plus the duodenal flexure. Bring it back down there now. Come around into the jejunum. Again, just a lot of mesenteric fat, nothing really obvious. It's abnormal at the moment. I think it's looking pretty normal. A few adhesions in the bowel just here, which is interesting, but probably not pathologic. It's kind of everything kind of clumped together just here. Certification. Yeah. So coming down past the cecum into the colon. Then looking back towards the urinary bladder, everything looks pretty good down there. Clean. Short gastric arteries, it's all normal. Got the kidney coming up at us. And the adrenal gland should be in there somewhere, but I can't see it very easily with all the fat. Just up there. there is. So that looks pretty normal as well. So what we're going to do is want to make sure that the...
on Balder is patent in this case. So I'm going to find the duodenum again. Can we get some moistened swabs there, Jeff? It's oftentimes pretty hard to make out the common bile duct in these guys when they're so overweight. It's going to be running right in this section here and coming up into the duodenum right in that area. So I'm just going to get a 25 gauge needle, please. And on office sound, we're very confident that the, um, another swab, please, Jeff, that the uh, common bile duct wasn't dilated and we could see it and visualize it nicely um, coming up into the cystic duct with all the kind of lobar branches of the biliary system. So I'm just going to pop a needle into the lumen of the gut here and to see if we can identify that there's any um, bile flow or not. the gold with a gentle squeeze we're not going to achieve much because of the condition that we're dealing with so I'm just going to go kind of adjacent to where the duodenal papilla would be a little lumen of the gut here let's see what we get back sometimes we can get chylus fluid and so we've got some chylus fluid I mean there we can see that that fluorescent yellow colored fluid is there um, and so based on that, I'm actually not going to do a um, enterotomy here to catheterize that common bile duct. I don't think we need to based on the ultrasound findings and also um, what we saw um, just now in surgery. So I'm going to focus on this gallbladder and getting this thing out. So can I get, please, some number 30 PDS paper needle? Have we already got some? Perfect. Thanks, Jeff. And so I'm just going to put a um, cruciate suture into the apex of the gallbladder. It's going to act like a little handle for me to um, retract on it and then help us with our dissection. Okay. So any more questions there, Jeff? Uh, what about if we can see at this point? Yeah, we can definitely try and do that. We can definitely try and zoom in. So is it possible... To, let me just adjust these lights a bit. Okay. I think probably hard up there, Jeff. I don't got it a bit more. I think that's probably pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, and another question about it. it's possible that this dog's obesity contributed to the formation of the gallbladder mucosil? Um, I don't know the definitive answer to that, whether obesity is a risk factor for mucosil production or formation or not, um, but that's a good question. So I'm just going to come over here with a loose, um, spoon and I'm just going to put this through in a, in a cruciate pattern into the gallbladder. So I'm just going to use this um, as a stay suture, essentially. Just pull it up a little bit more for me, Jeff.
So I really like to use stay sutures um, for various things in the abdomen. Um, retracting is really, really useful with this kind of um, situation. So just going to get Jeffrey to hold on to that one. I think we're doing a pretty good job there. So you can actually see that pretty nicely there. So can I get the quarter turn down to 20, please? And so this is really about getting on a nice plane of dissection between the um, wall of the gallbladder and the liver parenchyma. Um, thank you. And so once we get on a nice plane of dissection, we can just kind of peel the gallbladder off. So this time I like to surgery down a little bit just to get access in here. We're working under this lobe of liver. It's a pretty oozy little liver here. We'd coming through the parenchyma a little bit. Pretty friable bit of liver too. Let's come this way, bit, Jeff. That's it. A bit more. We'll be taking out of the bites as well. Yeah. Can you please tighten up the table? Just roll it around a little bit. I'm not sure if it's the wheels on the floor. I think so. So, just getting down. Um, can we get some gel foam, please? Just a bit of oozing from this liver surface. So just getting down towards the cystic duct here. So freed a lot of this um, core bladder off the liver that we need to with already. So I'm just gonna get Jeff to give a bit more traction there. Take a bit more pressure. So getting pretty close to being able to tie this thing off. Not as many adhesions as I've seen in some others. No, it's come off fairly well so far. I don't want to jinx things. Get a swab down here just to help with some of this oozing so I can see a little bit better. We're working down a pretty deep hole here, so I'm not sure how much you're going to be able to see on the um, on the screen, but we can see our gallbladder is kind of coming out there. And once we've freed it off the attachments from the liver, which were um, up in here and just around over this side, the gallbladder does shift into a more caudal location, and we can get better um, access to it to put some um, ligatures on there. So different ways to do this, I like to just use a silk um, hand tie ligature. So can I get some uh, silk, please, Cara? Um, it's not recommended to use things like uh, hormonic scalpel or um, ligature on the um, common bile duct or the cystic duct. Um, it doesn't seal very well, reportedly. So when I do this, I like the security of using something like silk to make sure nothing slips. Over here. 
Okay, so Jeff, you got a pretty pretty nice view down there. Mm-hmm. I'm just putting my right angle clamp onto the common bile duct there, cystic duct, I should say, and then another little right angle just above that. I'm going to cut in between those. Low normal. Yep. Okay, so that's our gallbladder. Um, with my clamp around the, um, the cystic duct there, and I've still got a clamp inside the dog here that we need to get a suture around, uh, which we'll do in just one second. So. Sure how well you guys can see down in there now. It's on the end there. Put my light on. Is that a little bit better, Jeff? Can you see that better with my loops on that? You can see the end of the panel. Yeah, okay, great. So I'm just going to get a silk suture around that. I'm going to do hand ties. It's going to make my hands a little bit moist to do these hand ties. So Jeff, can you take that one there? Let's gently pull up on that. Okay, Jeff, just gently release it. Can you pull that little bit of liver lobe as you've come out? Just push that out of the way for me. That's great. Okay. Just take it out. So let's do a couple of throws on the silk. It's nice um, not security in the silk, so. Um, generally two throws is adequate actually, but we're going to do four just to make me sleep better at night. Okay, so just get a bit of suction down there and check what that looks like. See if we can get you guys a bit of eyeball on that. So Jeff, can you try and pull some of that lever up? Just there. Uh, So I'm not sure if you can see that or not. We've just got our suture around the cystic duct that we've just isolated and then ligated and divided. I'm just going to cut these sutures. And that is the cystectomy, cholecystectomy. So if you guys have any questions on that at the moment, um, we'll take it. Sample out of that gallbladder for culture as well. I'm not sure if Paul wanted that, but we will do that. There's not a lot of oozing now from this liver. So everything's kind of controlled itself. A sample of just the bile or the other tissue sample? No, I'll just take the bile. So it's going to put this swab back down here. We might be able to see on the video a little bit of this kind of bed where the gallbladder kind of came from. I'm just having a bit of a look down here to make sure there's no dramatic bleeding or concern. So if we hold that up there, Jeff, we might be able to just make out in there. So this is a kind of area right middle on the quadrate lobe that the um, gallbladder has been sitting in just in there. And that's where we removed it from. It's kind of tucked up under the ribs there. So it's a bit hard to see on the video. Um, so that's all pretty good. So we're going to take a liver biopsy now. Um, this isn't from a specific region of the liver, just a piece. So a um, couple of ways to do this, I'm just going to actually take my medicine balm scissors and I'm just going to cut a sliver off just like that. And I'm going to use my electrosurgery. There's just a couple of little oozes in here. 
I think the quarter he turned up a bit, please. Just cauterizing that cut section of liver there to make sure there's no more bleeding. And that's worked pretty nicely. So nice piece of liver, atraumatic, simple, quick, and easy to do. So I think we're pretty much done there, Jeff. So I'm going to um, leave you with Jeff, one of our residents, for closing this. I'm going to just come over to the computer and just see if there's any questions for me. Um, otherwise, I'll leave you with Jeff. But um, thank you guys for joining us. Oops. And... Um, if you have any questions, feel free to jot them down now in the comment section. And I'll try and address those. Jeff's moving the camera around. Let me help you there, Jeff. Oh, yeah. Just pull that tight. So I'm just going to move that over a bit. Oops. Okay, make everyone feel a bit seasick at home. So, Carol, just need to be a bit careful of these cables as you come off around there. Okay. Um, so, the questions we've got, can we zoom in a bit? We've done that. Um, is it location or is that hyperparastalsis? There's hyperparastalsis there for sure. Um, there was an area of the intestine that was... Um, adhered together, which Jeff is just holding for us now, just in the terminal jejunum. Um, and so I think that's all that is. Um, why not laparoscopic? Um, that's a great question. Um, for me, I don't do a lot, a lot of laparoscopic surgery. Um, this is certainly a procedure that can be done laparoscopically, but it's not one that I do um, laparoscopically. So um, that's the simple answer to that. Um, thank you so much. Any more surgeries today from Reagan? Um, what have I got? There's a couple other things going on, but nothing else that we're going to live stream today. Um, I did do a TPLO earlier, um, which I didn't live stream because I've done a few of those recently. Um, and there's another quick question there. Teacher Tiger, don't you find a major duodenal pillar? That's a great question. Um, we didn't do an enterotomy to find that. On the ultrasound before the surgery, we could visualise the common bile duct really clearly. Um, and it wasn't dilated at all. Um, the rest of the low bar ducts through the liver looked completely normal. And in the surgery at the start, I actually put a needle in just adjacent to the duodenal pillar and we drew out um, a, an amount of just biliary fluid or bile stain fluid. So I'm confident that the bile duct is flowing adequately and so we didn't need to do the enterotomy and catheterize the papilla. So that's a great, great question from Teacher Tiger. Um, nice to see you, Piyush. Um, I hope your daddy's okay, um, doing well. Um, so thanks, guys. Just anyone that's online there, um, you know, I do quite a lot of um, procedures like TPLOs. Um, is it of interest for you guys for me to continue to put those up? I know that it's a lot of repetition, but if you guys want me to do that and, and have value in me doing, you know, as many of the TPLOs as possible, then please just let me know. Um, I generally do all of those with an arthroscope. The TPLO is part of the procedure is always pretty routine, but um, if you guys just want to comment there whether you have interest in me doing as you know all the TPLOs that I do, for instance, then then just let me know. Reagan saying absolutely. That's great, Reagan. Yeah, if you're keen on that, yeah, I'll just as when I, whenever I can, I'll do those and post them up um, as many videos as possible. Particularly love the scoping, from Aaron. Yeah, the scoping is always kind of interesting. Do with the TPLOs, they do become fairly routine. That's part of the stage, so. Um, if that's great, two of you there want to do it, I'll do it. So I'm very happy to. So, again, I'm going to head out. I'm going to leave you with Jeff. Just doing the closure. He's going to have a bit of fun there with that um, gas field intestinal contents, uh, intestinal loops trying to burst out of the incision there. Um, so if you um, are interested in what we're doing with um, the continuing education stuff that Charles and I do, then please um, head over to vetdojo.com and, and check out our e-learning platform. Um, or jump on the South Paws Facebook page and join our closed group and you can get more information on what we're doing there. And also, if you like these live streams, then um, subscribe to our channel. And if you turn our notifications on, then we can let you know when we're doing more streaming. So 
I'm going to hand you over to Jeff. I'm going to mic him up, um, and he'll regale you with some hilarious anecdotes, no doubt. Thanks, James. Now I've got some expectations, of funny anecdotes. Let's see what crops up. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Everyone out there as well, staying safe. And back again with another abdominal closure. Now these pesky intestines have uh, already sort of submitted a little bit. Once I've got the first part of the linear alba back together, they've gone back in nicely, even though initially it looks like they were never going to fit in. So you may have noticed that I've chosen not to flush this dog's abdomen um, with any sterile saline um, because we did not have any leakage from the gallbladder. We did not end up having to do an enterotomy. I'm not overly concerned about um, flushing this dog's abdomen. Um, and we did have everything packed off at the time. So again, there hasn't been much in the way of any um, blood clots that may have formed and uh, sat in the rest of the abdomen and uh, go on to form adhesions. So, we have not flushed this dog's abdomen um, and we'll not be placing a drain um, either as, again, we're not concerned at this stage about either any ongoing bleeding or uh, dehiscence of any surgical sites such as an enterotomy or our breakdown of the ligature around the um, cystic duct. Uh, so this is a little border terrier. Um, from memory, not a particularly large breed, but um, little terriers are un not uncommonly predisposed to this condition. Um, it's not uh, unreasonable also to think that there, there could be um, Cushing's uh, in not this case in particular, but in any animal that you're seeing that has a gallbladder mucus seal, um, a lot of those cases will actually be Cushingoid as well, as it is a, a predisposition. Oh, you're more than welcome. They're nothing too special. They get the job done. I get some 3 0 Monison, thanks. So again, we're not concerned about this dog's um, capacity for wound healing. So all of the sutures that I'm using here are going to be absorbable and we'll put an intradermal layer in it as well. And I just feel I'll make sure that we're happy with the whole linear, which that all feels nice and tight. So we'll run along now from core to cranial with our continuous subcutaneous layer and that's going to bring everything nice and closely together for us to oppose it with the intradermals. Uh, and for uh, Max there, uh, the breeder dog is a border terrier, if you missed it just before. So I'm just putting a little hemostat on that end. We'll come back to that and we'll tie our intradermal layer to there, just so it makes it easier to bury the knot. all those starting out in the veterinary profession and wondering about suture patterns and techniques and what's the, the best to do and just how to end up getting better at stitching in 
altogether. Uh, the best advice really I could have is that you just need to get in there and do it over and over and over again. Um, suturing and, and stitching is just one of those things that repetition is the best for. If you can find little models that you can practice on, um, better yet, obviously, patients are best if that can be done under supervision and uh, you have the support of a, um, a more senior vet that can guide you and show you some tips and tricks, um, then that's just the best way to learn. doesn't matter if you're not fast to start with, you'll eventually get there. Just take your time, work your way through it. It's just like anything. The more you practice, the better you'll get. And don't stress too much in the beginning. Uh, Regan, that uh, question about sighthound breeds, is that in relation to their anaesthetic or um, their surgery, um, such as closing their skin, something like that? As a whole. Um, so, I mean, there are some particular things to be aware of that pertain to, to some sighthounds. Um, one in particular, there are some drug um, metabolism that they uh, sometimes are not so good at or they have uh, sensitivities. For instance, some of them could have some uh, sensitivities to some sedative agents such as acepromazine. Um, here, routinely, we usually don't find too much issue. Um, some breeds are worse than others. Uh, things like that. So it, it's something we do take into account, but we don't see um, too much of an issue um, with it, at least in Australia. The things that we do look out for in some particular sighthounds, for instance, greyhounds, uh, is that about on average 30 to 33 percent of them um, are going to have uh, a condition called hyperfibrinolysis, where their um, blood clots that they form have an accelerated rate of breakdown. They um, have an increased amount of um, fibrin breakdown. So we, we do routinely pre-treat these animals with... Um, uh, it's gone from my head. Tranexamic acid. Um, and we give that intravenously so that we can um, try and avert that causing issues, especially in some of the major surgeries that we have, for instance doing a um, amputation for um, possible osteosarcoma um, or for um, any abdominal surgery as well. Okay. Oh, I'm glad we can help. That's what we aim to do. Whereabouts are you uh, going to be performing your residency? I'm only in my first year, so you're not particularly behind me. Regan said, many thanks, I appreciate it. Not a problem, Regan. Do 
Did Miranda need something? Oh, yep. Can't say that I know it, but all the best. I'm sure you'll have heaps of fun. There's always a little bit of annoyance around the umbilicus. The skin there tends to be a bit more lax and floppy, so to speak. That means when you are doing an intradermal layer, it's slightly trickier to get that, complete that position and get your needle through properly, especially when right here, and like we always do, um, we're using a tapered needle that we've already sort of run along the subcutaneous layer. So it can get slightly blunted. The sharp needle does work best in really getting through those tissues nicely, but still coming together fairly well. Uh, thank you very much. I'd like to think that I'm not too bad. I've had a little bit of practice. Um, I've been a vet now for... Ooh, uh, what, close to seven and a half, eight years, so. Another question from Laura. Mm -hmm. What would you do if by mistake you end up rupturing the gallbladder while placing your space suture and tucking? Um, so that's not too big of an issue. Um, the vast majority of these gallbladder mucoceles are going to be sterile, so we're not going to be dealing with uh, infections agents that could be coming through um, like we would if, for instance, we'd gone into our enterotomy and had gastric content, uh, sorry, um, intestinal contents come through. Um, but the bile itself can be irritant to the abdomen. Uh, but again, as long as we get onto it quickly enough and we can um, clean up the abdomen quite nicely, the, uh, you can actually perform colless cystotomies and just open up the gallbladder and then re-suture the gallbladder um, if required. And it's not going to come rushing out particularly. So this is a, with a, a mucoseal, everything's quite thick um, with that material inside. Uh, so we want, might get a little bit of ooze of some of the liquid contents, but again, we've, we've packed it off um, to begin with, uh, one, for one of those reasons, and two, the small amount that will come out shouldn't cause that much concern. And we would, in that case, then flush the abdomen to remove as many of the um, bile salts as we could. And um, again, we probably would still not place a drain in that case. Uh, we would just make sure that the abdomen was flushed um, before closure. I'm just coming back and going to actually bury this knot nicely. So this dog will stay in hospital um, at least overnight um, for us to make sure that its pain relief is under control and that there's been no um, complications from the surgery. Um, once it's um, happy up and about, staying to eat for us, then we will be able to discharge it. So it's going to um, remain on fluid therapy overnight, of course, to um, keep its blood pressure uh, within normal limits and uh, make sure it stays hydrated because a lot of these guys won't tend to um, eat or drink for us. They, they might have some mild nausea, um, in which case we do treat that uh, with some antiemetics and um, obviously with the fluid therapy. And uh, then once it goes home, it'll probably just go home on some, um, probably with a fentanyl patch or some codeine. We haven't decided yet what um, opiate medication we'll go home with. Um, plus or minus a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory um, in order to keep a lot of the surgical swelling down. So that's all finished now. So we'll get a, uh, a dressing onto this area. We, all of our patients, their wounds get covered with a, um, an op-site and here at dressing with some melanin underneath it to keep the 
wound healthy for the first few days at least, um, but we routinely will keep it on for about seven days. And uh, then we'll come back to us for a few rechecks to make sure it's all healing up okay. Um, but once the abdominal wound is healed, um, then this dog can end up going back to normal activities. There should be no ongoing, ongoing um, care that it will need as long as we have uh, done our job properly. So thanks for all to hang around to the end. Uh, appreciate you watching the closure. Um, as always, please do um, subscribe to our channel. Make sure you get the bell on so you get a notification when we have got a video going live. Um, and check out our e-learning platform if you are in the veterinary industry and are interested in some further education. So take care and we'll see you next time.